Thank you very much. I hope the microphone is picking up. Is it? No? No. Nope. Right. I can speak louder. That's fine. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure. Uh, my colleague Simona Di Prandi is particularly shy, so he's not going to present with me. Uh, but he has contributed and he was with me in this project when we all started called 3 gsnet What is 3 gsnet It's easily said. It's a project to share, to, to build a work, uh, working uh, a workplace for sharing data uh, related to geographic uh, data. Um, it consisted of three main packages. One was uh, a uh, free software applications to share data, because we need applications and APIs and stuff to, to share and use data. The use of open standards, which and how. And the third package was uh, on licensing of open data. So uh, that was our part as, as lawyers. So our task was, in a nutshell, to analyze the current policies and to find out or, or to draft actually a license for 3 gsnet the 3 g 3 gsnet license and to provide a white paper with uh, uh, the background information but actually uh, our task was not properly defined because there was at least one issue that needed to be taken care of and this issue was Proliferation. Uh, proliferation is a bad thing. Not just nuclear proliferation is a bad thing, but also the, the license proliferation is a bad thing. Uh, before drafting a, a license, you of course you have to question yourself, ask yourself whether you need a new draft. And usually you need a new draft because but first, because the, the, the ones that you find around are not good enough and you think you can outsmart the drafter and do a better job. Most often you are wrong because public uh, well-known uh, licenses are much better than any effort that you can do on your home. So, uh, because we are humble, we <coughs> didn't want to draft a new license. The second reason why you want to draft a license is because you are uh, you want to have a vanity license. Some, some, somehow your names uh, need to go around. This is a wrong reason, of course. Uh, the third one, which is a good reason for writing a, a, a new license, is because the existing licenses don't deliver uh, what they, uh, what you need to deliver. So they have legal effects that you uh, cannot find there. Of course. Uh, but most important is why you don't, you should not want to draft a new license. Because uh, the more licenses you bring about, the more confusion, the more incompatibilities. Because if you have a license, you have conditions, and you have conditions, the condition can be very well non compatible with the other conditions, and so you have to merge data together you are faced with the consequence that the more conditions you put, the more likely those conditions are incompatible. And so you, uh, for sharing those data together, you might end up with infringing one or the other, or even both of them. Or you cannot share them together. So uh, you have a, this, this, uh, this uh, non opportunity. So before writing our license, we reframe the task. So first, find whether there is one uh, uh, right license, and if not, <coughs> to write one. And this license had to, to at least cover two basic uh, tasks. Be legally sound, of course. As a lawyer, you always want your contract and, and licenses to be uh, bulletproof and to bring the desired effect. Of course, those two things go together because if the license is not valid, it doesn't bring the effect that you want. So, we had, so to speak, three or four different choices. Uh, 
I, uh, this is for public sector information, it's not just pro uh, private information, it's mostly public sector information. So, uh, and the, uh, the first choice was whether to, to use an Italian or an international license. Uh, to use a copyleft or, or non copyleft license. And the third option was whether to have a license or just a waiver. I will explain that more in detail later. Uh, the fourth, fourth option was not really an option. The fourth option were, was whether to use a non commercial license. Uh, as has been said before, uh, non commercial, Chris, uh, non commercial doesn't needs the open data definition by the open knowledge and actually it's contrary to the law and we will just see that later. So this uh, was contributed by my colleague Simona Di Brandi. Um, this is basically the options that we have. You see we have licenses and public domain waivers as a main branch and then uh, the licenses branches into attribution and, and share alike and the other branches only attribution. And you see quite a few of the most used uh, licenses in Europe where we have a clear, almost clear, uh, legislation on database protection. So, first option, Italian or international. Uh, of course, we are Italian lawyers and we are familiar and we are culturally uh, in, in a good environment. We, we choose Italian, but the, con the contrary points on using uh, an Italian license uh, outweigh the, uh, the pros because data, the market for data is international. Uh, the presentation by Chris Tiger before uh, made it clear that these data need to be shared not just within our borders. Moreover, this project was for uh, intra border. Uh, communication, so that was an option, full stop, no question asked. So we have a few of them, Italian or even foreigner licenses, you see French, Italian, UK, they were ruled out. So this simplified our task a little bit more. So next, very big question, copyleft, non-copyleft, <coughs> share alike, non-share alike, what, what is share? Copyleft. I am all in favor of, of the concept of, of copyleft. I don't believe copyleft can exist in data, in database rights. Copyleft means that if you want to use my data together with yours, your data needs to be licensed under the same license I'm sharing the, your, my data with. But this is only uh, workable and it's only enforceable if there is a concept of derivative. Because uh, in order to compel others to use a particular license and to condition your licensing to their user, uh, their release of, of the use uh, data under the same license requires that there is a derivative. So their use of their data or their use of my data together, uh, or together with their data impinges on my rights, so I have a right to compel them. In database rights, it's very difficult to find a derivative concept. Of course, this is the first example. In this example, you quite clearly have a derivative. You take data from one set, one database, or from one data set, more data from a second data set, you just merge them together in a single data set, this is a derivative. This is that, like taking text from one page, taking text from another page, merging them together, testing them to one page. That is the derivative. It's the same concept as in copyright. But with database, it works differently. This could not be a derivative. You have one table with data, a second table with data, and a database. You gave instructions, instructions and queries, and you have, as a query, you have a another table with all the data combined. Is this a derivative or not? I suspect, I am submitting that this is not uh, quite clear, it's not a derivative. So, uh, share alike would not work in this environment. 
The third example where you don't find a derivative is how geodata mostly work, like overlaying information, putting information one on the on the top of the other. Uh, you have some data, other data combined, geo reference, so uh, they point out to a, a geographic uh, uh, array or, or pointer, and you have a query as a result, which can be a map or, or whatever, all information, <coughs> geographic. Um, this is not this is not a derivative of this. So you have so many scenarios where copyleft doesn't work. So copyleft was known uh, known an option to us. Uh, of course, somebody can, uh, might want to use copyleft licenses for using data. Uh, good luck. Uh, I'm in favor. This uh, enlarges the commons, to preserve the commons of using this data from uh, making them proprietary. But uh, we cannot be sure that the effect is the one the one wants. It's very difficult to enforce it because there are so many uncertainties. And more, <coughs> um, moreover, with data, uh, open data and open data in the public sector, uh, question mark whether you must allow commercial exploitation. And the answer to this question is yes, you must allow proprietary exploitation. And by proprietary exploitation, I don't mean just non-commercial. Non-commercial means I use the data for commercial purposes. Uh, this is more precise. You are selling the permission to use your data. So this is more than, than, than non-commercial. Uh, you take your data, combine with others, put them together, sell a CD-ROM, sell an access to a, uh, a web uh, page or whatever. So uh, this is a business model on using data, selling them. Uh, so, is the public administration allowed to discriminate against these particular use, these particular proprietary exploitation? Answer: No. Uh, in Italy, especially, the answer is no. Uh, and we have two evidences. The first piece of evidence is the so-called open by default legislation, which is in the Italian Code for Digital uh, uh, Administration. It's not a requirement to, to publish open data, but it's a default rule. When the public administration, not being compelled to release this data, does release this data and doesn't put a license on it, this data can be used for any purposes, including commercial, direct commercial exploitation. So this quite hints as to what the laws that want administration to release data and for which purposes. Um, there is a further step uh, after the uh, open by default legislation, so-called transparency decree or decreto trasparenza in Italian. The, the, there are some data sets that must be released by the public administration as a freedom of use under a uh, license that can be used by proprietary exploitation. So the business model that this release of data shall allow include uh, proprietary exploitation. This even more rules out uh, the choice of uh, uh, copyleft licensing. So even all the copyleft licenses were stricken out. So we have been left with a few more. Next step. License or waiver. These are the two option, main options. Sorry to, to work backwards. A license means you have a legal uh, uh, deed or something that puts conditions. A waiver is I don't mind. I release all my data to the maximum extent possible. These are the two. So uh, the choice on whether to apply a a license provided that you have as a public administration intellectual property on it is well to request an attribution and this is the main uh, requirement that uh, you can have still in copyleft to limit your liability this is not an issue under Italian law because you cannot limit liability unless there is a uh, 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 an 
approval in writing of this condition, special approval in writing, so it doesn't work for a public license. Uh, a non-derivative can also be uh, imposing not to, not to, not to uh, change the, the data state, including not correcting it, not integrating it, not amending it. So this is not an option as, uh, as well, or to have a derivation. All these reasons are, in our view, not a valid reason for a for a public administration to impose a license, a legal deed that binds the parties, even not the contract. So, in order to keep it simple, a, a waiver, a simple waiver, is much more simple because it doesn't require, it doesn't put conditions. So it just says, do this and that and that. This is all you can do. So, uh, uh, we want to have the maximum compatibility, the maximum reuse possible to create whatever better business model private sector can, or public sector even can make uh, out of the data, the release data. So that it's a sort of a, a artificial public domain is created, something which is the most akin to a public domain. Remember, in, in, in data protection, we don't have moral rights in copyright. In droit d'auteur, diritto d'autore, we have uh, moral rights. So uh, we are not faced with a, an area which can never go actually public domain. So in our view, the best option for public sector in, in Italy to release data was a, a, a waiver. A release. So we ruled out all the licenses, and we which uh, ch uh, choose uh, one. Sorry, I go back, 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 back backwards. Uh, the main life. Sorry, the main licenses that was were, were left was were uh, CC0 and ODC DDL. Uh, but the most, the more. Uh, widespread, internationally oriented, and uh, in a framework that uh, is constantly improved by thousands of lawyers and experts around is Creative Commons. So as long as Creative Commons can be used, I would always prefer to go for the Creative Commons. This, so this is a rationale for choosing CC0. CC0 is a public domain waiver or where public domain is not allowed, but in database uh, rights it's basically allowed, uh, it provides the most widespread, the most far-reaching license. So to, uh, to create the, uh, an alternative or, or, or uh, something very, very close to the public domain. So this was our choice. The rationale is clear. The time is limited. For further information, for a more thorough explanation, you can follow this link if uh, the, uh, the slides are, are distributed. Uh, I think I've closed, I ended my presentation, and I thank you for your attention and your Thank you. Hello. Uh, a very really interesting issue also we usually emphasize the role of licenses and legal instruments and I was doing the same at the beginning but there is a very big issue as regarding to open phenomenon is also the licenses proliferation and so how to choose and how to, to, to evaluate the, the, the best instruments in order to implement and to foster the values that you want to uh, implement so thank you Carlo we will speak about it later I hope now I leave the floor to